just about to get dark, sun's going down. I'm gonna go ahead and lumber on down to the bottom, back down to the truck, and uh, rest my feet, get a little bite to eat, make a plan for tomorrow. Beast of a pack out of here. Go fire, eat it, take it out of my stomach. Maybe at that threshold where it's like I could be that guy that just goes crazy. I'm back. Up here, what? Welcome to Mordor. Oh, she's all loaded up. I bet you want to see him, don't you? Boom. Look at that guy. Hungry, eat, thirsty, drink. Cold, make a fire. You wonder why I'm crazy? That's why. Got home and uh, my folks weren't home, but uh, there was a note on the door that said, Timothy, will you milk the cows and feed the calves? Feed the chickens, get the eggs, whatever else was there. Make sure the horses are fed and watered. My parents have gone, uh, gone north to help my brother move, so. It's about nine o'clock at night, dark, no moon. Calves are bellering, so uh, we'll go milk me some cows. Oh well. Bright side is I get to do it again in the morning. And hopefully get up on the mountain before daylight. So can't wait, get up on the mountain, get off grid. Love it. When I was a boy, I had dreams of climbing to the highest peaks that surround this little farming valley that I call home and finding the big gnarly buck bedded in the shale or under an old nasty mahogany bush. I've heard of muley giants coming out of this side of the valley, but in my 20 plus years of hunting here, I've never laid eyes on a buck of that caliber. But I do have some great memories of this canyon from when I was a kid. Man, I love this country. I used to go up in this big canyon over here, just for fun, I used to drive my motorcycle up there. I remember one time I was up there with my cousin and I wrecked my motorbike and poked a hole in the gas tank right in the bottom. So we laid it on its side, slept there that night, put a stick in it, taped it with duct tape, and then hauled butt out the next morning. I always wanted to hunt. Hunt in here, just never did. I don't know why, plenty. I guess there's so much country to, to, to hunt and to cover. Pooped already. Right in front of me. I'm just about where I want to get to glass this, this mountainside for deer. Sweet. Big country. Gonna be a beast of a pack out of here if you get something else. From where I'm sitting, I can see one hell of a lot of the mountainside. And I have it in my head that at any minute, I'm gonna pick up my glass and spot that buck that I dreamt of as a kid. I know that this mountain has extremely low deer numbers, so I have to keep reminding myself that there's a strong possibility that I won't see any deer at all. Socked in. Makes it real tough to glass when you get this. It's gonna get dark here pretty quick. It's already cold. Put the camera away and uh, bail off this mountain before it gets dark. It's downhill all the way, because it was uphill all the way here, so. Gotta get back to the house, gotta milk the cows again one more night, and then I'm free, free to just go on.
now that I'm finally off chore duty, I can finally focus on what it is that I've traveled 600 miles for, and that's finding a big mule deer buck. I've got the weather that I want, and I'm in the area where I want to be. So now it should be just a matter of eyes on the mountain and boots on the ground. Days like today, I'm so over being a solo hunter. <laughs> I did just see a cow moose, and about 40 head of elk. It's not the weather that's frustrating, I can handle the weather. I got the gear, I got the equipment. Got the clothing. It's just the fact that I'm not finding the animals I'm looking for. That's the frustration. I would say that I'm getting to the point of delirium. Is delirium a word? Yeah, I think it's a word. Tired, frustrated. Cold. And I'm in, I'm in a complaining mode. What's, what's wrong with me? I don't complain. I'm not the kind of guy that complains about anything. I've been given a gift from God to have the career that I have, so I'm not going to complain. Rule number one, never complain. But I am going to tell you, it's getting tough. Not so tough physically as it's getting to be mentally. At this point in October, I've already spent nearly 60 days in the field since I started hunting this fall. And the hunts haven't exactly been easy. When you spend this much time out hunting alone, they rarely are. When people ask me what is one of the most difficult things about hunting solo, I always answer without a doubt, it's the mental games you've got to play. To keep yourself up on the mountain and from heading to your truck early, it really is just like Coach used to say, keeping your head in the game. Idaho has been kicking my butt. I really don't have anything to show as far as deer go and everything. I haven't even seen an antlered buck. So what I've done is I've headed back home for the weekend. I'm gonna, I've got a new rifle that I'm gonna get my scope mounted on, get this thing dialed in, and then I'm gonna head to Montana and hook up with my brother Boyd and see if I can't get myself a buck. You know, see if I can't find something worth going after. And uh, hopefully, hopefully get this done. This late season stuff is really starting to wear on me a little bit. Right now, I'm feeling a little bit whooped and dejected, kind of at a loss. All of my little honey holes and a handful of new areas that I wanted to check out have gotten me nothing. I've been so frustrated and focused on hunting that I even went days without turning on the camera. It's time to regroup, it's time to get serious and find some bucks. Well, the shooting light definitely. A nice little sunrise up here if you can see it. Beautiful big mountains. It's a great country. It's fairly open here in the timber, but it's super quiet, so we have to hope that they just stay still long enough to get the camera on them and get a shot. But otherwise, I'll either have a dead animal on the ground or have some footage of some buds as they run away.
took off in the dark up the trail. And uh, I thought it was kind of clear this morning, but the snows have just started to come in pretty hard. So it's made it tough to spot. I did spot a little buck up on the hill back here. I could probably go up there and try to kill him, but I'd just be killing him, you know. It's not a deer that I'd be super happy with. I mean, I'm not a trophy hunter by any means, but you know, I'm just as happy to go home from a hunt without a kill. So, I mean, with the cameras, I never feel like I go in like empty handed anyway. So, I'm gonna work up to this little vantage point. I wanna be able to look down and look up into this big canyon. Do some glassing, but when it's snowing like this, it's kinda socked in. Best just to sit it, to sit it out or uh, get up the mountain. You know, cover some country. Covering ground is something that I've gotten pretty darn good at over the last few weeks. It is refreshing to see so much new countryside, but what I could really use about now is to lay my eyes on some rack. Just saw three bull elk across the ridge way over there. I'm gonna stick to the plan. I could rim all the way around and go over there, but why? I mean, this is great country right here. There's tons of milk in here. At least I know that there are elk in here. I've seen Something my grandpa always taught me was hungry, eat, thirsty, drink, cold, make fire. Just decided rather than sitting up on the ridge, freezing my butt off, I'd sit here where I can have a good vantage point of the timber and make a little fire. Fires are always comforting. Time for a quick battery change. Now I'll douse this fire. Start moving down the ridge. Slowly and quietly. The sun's gone down, so it's gonna be dark here shortly. Fun little afternoon. Keep moving down the ridge. There's another clearing down there a little ways that I'll stop and call from again. So, just have to get lucky this time. Gotta get lucky.
Gosh dang. Tell you what, that's a bright light. Well, that kind of happened fast. I was going down the hill and then I saw some mule deer does and I decided to glass. I glassed over there and there was a great buck standing up there on the ridge. So, like three, over 300 yards, I ranged it. It was, I think, 345. I don't remember. My brain just kind of went crazy. So, boogied down the hill where I could get a clear, clear shot. And I got nice and steady and shot. I didn't even do any filming. I just grabbed everything and came over here trying to get a second shot on him. And uh, bumped him right here. Gosh dang. I always want to be ultra positive of a clean miss. I'm right back here this morning to check for sign and possibly trail him up, but not to be so. I really have grown to love spending time in the elements. Why you might ask, that's a pretty damn good question. I think it has a lot to do with the cameras and what I've found that they can capture during this time. Nature seems to bear her emotions during a storm. Simple things come to life and it serves as a constant reminder to me to continue to live mine. 